So, what can be done going forward uh, by anybody who, who would, um, would like that this thing to never happen again? This uh, civil awareness about this has to be increased. People have to know what happened, by whom, and why. And uh, we have to strive to achieve legal political recognition of Pojalu massacre, for which uh, Azerbaijani and Turkish community and uh, many American politicians have done uh, a lot. Uh, we know that many uh, states uh, and the Congresses have adopted resolutions on this uh, subject, as well as uh, some uh, other countries as well. And eventually, the people responsible for the massacre have to be prosecuted. And uh, interestingly, I made this point um, some time ago, and uh, you know, just in the last year, since the uh, last anniversary of Pochal events, uh, we've seen what has happened in, in Ukraine. And it is the same scenario that has been uh, developed in Azerbaijan, in nagorno karabakh by Armenians together with um, with the Russian politicians. It's type of hybrid war, it's ethnic cleansing, it's creating frozen conflict area to create a constant pressure point. And not allow any of these countries to move towards West, towards progress, development, and so on. As much as Azerbaijan would like to, to be a vocal supporter of uh, West, and which we still do, but we have this pressure point uh, of Nagorno-Karabakh and 20% of the area occupied, and we cannot do much. We would be probably welcome into you know process uh, to integrate into EU, but we we are freezing the process. We're not starting this because we know that this conflict can be open anytime, and you can see the same in in Ukraine. Uh, Crimea was occupied using similar tactics, you know, the regiment they already had there in a sleeping mode that got activated uh, at the needed time. Uh, the atrocities they are atrocities committing in the west, uh, east part of Ukraine with the Donetsk and Luhansk areas occupied uh, currently, parts of them. And interestingly, you know, once they've occupied this lands, they are not really even trying to to proclaim the independence, because that's not really what they are trying to do. They, they are trying to create a frozen conflict. They want these areas to be still uh, maybe even part of Ukraine, uh, but doing anything related to, uh, to being part of EU, Western world, NATO. And, um, and the, the thing is with the uh, West, being more peaceful in this case and trying to avoid the conflict leads to to encouraging this this kind of events happening. And this will keep happening and happening again until the conflict in Ukraine, conflict in Azerbaijan, they get properly addressed. It's a very clear picture. You have an aggressor, you have lands occupied, you have still Recruits from Armenia, officers, privates, and so on, that have been recruited in Armenia, dying in Nagorno-Karabakh, and you know it's still kind of okay. This is puppet regime in um, in Nagorno-Karabakh. This has nothing to do with Armenia. Similarly, you can see that in Ukraine there are weapons from Russia that are produced only in Russia that have never been sold to anywhere else and. They are multiple times witnessed and photos, videos, you know, live witnesses that they are in Ukraine. But still, you read Western uh, newspapers on this, they will say allegedly Russian troops, pro-Russian forces, and so on. You know, a duck has to be called duck, and you know, people have to start naming things as they are. And that's one of the responsibilities of the West, of the free world, starting to address this issue and get stuck on this. And this are again events that are linked. 
Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia, Azerbaijan, the same acting, you know, actors and victims and so on. And uh, if this uh, if events start being addressed, that will be what the world needs the, uh, for uh, for peace. And um, amazingly, if you look at, uh, after the World War II, this would be the only times when any country have tried to reshape the map. So, and that started with Armenia trying to reshape the map of Azerbaijan. If there would have been a proper reaction at the time, we wouldn't be seeing any of this. And, you know, interestingly, people in Armenia or in Russia very often will say, well, look at the U.S. They, they get their troops into Iraq, uh, Afghanistan. Why are they allowed and we are not allowed? And um, I heard one answer that I really liked, that, okay, when U.S. or West gets involved, you get South Korea. When Russia or you know people like Armenia gets involved, then you get North Korea. So that is the the perfect comparison. It's not about you know involving or using armed forces. It's the the product you get there. If you get free society without you know any foreign bases, anything, democracies, elections, and so on, that shows that you know what was the initial purpose of this. But once the purpose is to cut somebody's territory and uh, and increase your land and, and so on, then, then you know that uh, it's, it's different. So um, just to recoup this, uh, it's very important again to commemorate this event every year and I appreciate that people that know everything about this and still keep coming to these presentations, take part in the uh, parking rallies. And again, I wouldn't differentiate between taking part in any of those events. Thank you for participating in one or two or many of those. Because this is the part of the mosaic that we have to build to create this awareness again for this never to happen. Um, you know, keep talking to anybody you can, including your kids. Uh, for example, today I had a conversation with my five-year-old daughter. She was um, asking where we are going, what's this presentation? And I was contemplating, should I tell her about this, or is it too gruesome for her to know now? Then I decided, as I usually try to be, uh, be honest with her, I told her that this is about the victims of the war about this crime perpetrated by uh, Armenians because uh, I don't want her to have hatred but I want her to have memory of this because that would be the only way to guarantee that this does not happen again. She can still be friendly with people but she has to have this memory. She has to know that you know the community, the country, the peace-loving countries, people, they, they have to become stronger, they have to have memory of this, and they have to fight against things like this happening. Thank you for coming again, and uh, thank, thank you, Small, for arranging this. Thanks so much, Elton, for the details. As you know, also, Kozala tragedy, Kozala genocide was recognized uh, more international organizations, especially U.S., States recognized Kozala genocide. Now I would like to invite here our best friend, Azerbaijanis friend, Dr. Alan here for a couple of words. Uh, now uh, uh, I'd like to say a little bit about Dr. Alan. Uh, some say, uh, some friends say Dr. Alan, Alexander Alan. Uh, uh, Representative Ellen, she, you know, prior to being elected to uh, Texas State of House, she served at the Texas Board of Education for about 10 years. And uh, as I said, some friends, they call her Dr. Ellen because she received her PhD from University of Houston uh, from the Department of Education and Curriculum and Instruction Department. Uh, Dr. Ellen was elected to Texas State of uh, House, Representative of House, in 2004. 
and she's married with two children and grandparent of five. Please uh, join me welcoming the girl. Thank you. 